Greetings and welcome to another episode of the Hourlings Podcast Project. My name is Martin Wilsey and I have a fresh haircut. Um, tonight uh, we're going to be talking about world building again. And uh, the specific kind of world building we're going to talk about is religion. And to that end, I'm turning it over to Dave. Dave, take it away. All right. This is a reaction. Uh, a bunch of years ago, I was at a convention. Um, and one of the sessions I attended was a world building panel for religion. Uh, and which they spent the entire panel talking comparatively about existing real world religions without giving any tips for how to actually devise a religion for your fantasy story. So today we are correcting that. So we're gonna talk about how do you as a writer go about kind of crafting a plausible, realistic religion for your fantasy world. Now I'm gonna start off by saying from a writing standpoint, I think a religion has two uh, major pieces, an ideology and an organization. I think an ideology has three components a belief system, something supernatural that they believe in, a ritual worship system, a set of conventions about how they go about uh, worshiping the supernatural, and finally, uh, a moral system, an ethical code of some sort uh, that allows them to define how people should operate uh, and socially with regard to their religion. I'm gonna leave it at that and kind of open it up to what do you guys think about a fantasy ideology for a religion. Yeah, I think it's a it is a bigger a bigger topic for fantasy writers. Um, I read a ton of uh, uh, science fiction novels that avoid religion almost completely. Um, others will might extrapolate current religions into uh, science fiction in the future. Um, or touch on them uh, collaterally. Um, so it's a really good good timing for the topic because my novel I'm working on right now as we speak um, is a time travel one. And religion is very, very different in, uh, uh, in various times of the, of the world. So that's, that's pretty cool. I think religion pairs super well with um, strong world building because it adds, number one, a religion usually can't survive or be like, you know, well known and established unless it's old. Or it has to be old. It has to have been there for a long time so generations can believe it and it goes on and on. And when you have something that's really old like that, it gives a validity to your world that you're building. Um, and I think it makes it more immersive. You, know, you have opportunities for lore and scriptures you can use prophecy I, prophecies I, I, I love prophecy in fantasy novels oh, <laughs> i hate prophecies in fantasy novels <laughs> <laughs> you can use scriptures, you can use scriptures uh, as like little epigraphs in front of your chapters like it's awesome oh, yeah. so i think it really pairs very well with really strong immersive world building now, i think religion is a fascinating topic i mean uh, I am someone who studies religions of the world. We're not going to talk about that, though. We're talking about fantasy. And, but I do see parallels in, in many of the world's religions, including what we may do in the future. Like, maybe in the future we believe in data more than the individual. Maybe how much you bring to the table and the data that you have, the data that you can create, is more valuable than who you are. That could be a religion of the future. And in fact, that was brought up in Udvali Huval's, uh, I believe. Well, Jeff, I mean, studying, studying world religions in our world um, as a writer, I think is a natural thing to do. We were talking before we started recording that lots of, uh, lots of stories based religions, fictional religions, off of ones that are, are recognizable. Some are more veiled than others. Um, some are quite obvious. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think that, yeah, to, to, to build a believable religion in a fictional world, you do have to study uh, religions in our world and see how they work and how they became, how they earned their validity, um, you know, how they, how they influence powerful people. All that stuff is, is good things to study. Well, and actually, it's kind of an advantage. If you're trying to define an alien world or some second, fan second world fantasy world that's not based on Earth, you don't really have any examples that you can go out and study. 
right? Yeah. You can't travel to uh, Narnia or, or the Middle Earth or something and go check it out. But on the other hand, there are real world religions and you can kind of look at them and, and take uh, pieces of those or, or let how some of those religions work uh, inform what you come up with. And, and let's face it, Dave, you know, rituals, you were talking about, about rituals on your list. Right. Are, are one of the strangest things that you can observe humans doing objectively, right? Because it, it, from, from someone who doesn't understand it, it doesn't seem to have, you know, some survival purpose. And so in fiction writing, I think that's a really awesome opportunity to make your ritual is super unique. Um, just, just pure entertainment um, of, of imagine, imagination and creativity of how your characters worship in this made up religion. And that's an awesome opportunity. Well, I mean, so, okay. So what does a belief system do for a religion? Well, it, it unites people, which is the point I was gonna make is that- Or divides. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, 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 it uh, but it is great in a world but what really brings up the conflict is when you have two religions that don't necessarily see eye to eye, to eye and have different belief systems. Maybe they coexist, maybe they don't. And that's tensions that you can put in your book in terms of maybe one believes that uh, you should not uh, look at the sun to the west when it rises and the other believes that you should not look at the sun to the east when it rises because it can't rise in both directions. But uh, some religion like that, I mean. Maybe there's two suns. Yeah, well, maybe there is two suns. Maybe they, they're in this uh, sort of figure eight orbital. I don't know. Yeah, the I foundation see. of some, some novels could be conflicts between two, you know, two faiths where, you know, both of them think that they're right and righteous and mm -hmm. um, on the right path and, and, and all of that, it could make for an interesting story. It's uh, harder to do though. World building yeah. for religion is co complicated. Well, it gets, and it could it can also get interesting if for instance, um, religions have diametrically opposed views. So for instance, mm -hmm. one religion says the, the you know, perhaps it, perhaps it developed in a harsh climate and so mm -hmm. all of existence is actually a test to see if you're strong enough to survive mm -hmm. so that you can fight in the final battle for the universe. Right. Right. And, and so you're, you're expected right. to be marshal uh, in order to uh, worship in that religion. And you're also expected Right. You're to describing Klingons on Star Trek. Right. Right. So, <laughs> no, seriously. It, it's, Star Trek is actually uh, an example of science fiction that has multiple religions. It I does, mean, yeah. the difference between the Vulcans and, you know, the Romulans and uh, Klingons is dramatic. Yeah. And they ha all have their own religions, and their own rituals and their own. In, in fact, you know. I, I would even add to that and say that if you're going to emphasize religion in your road building of a story, um, you definitely should have other religions that are competing or that are uh, schisms from the bigger religion. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, then you should probably have an explanation for why there's just one. Yeah, that's the same, like the mono planet. No yeah, planet that is, that is exactly ice. what I was going to say, Jeffrey. It's yeah. like having a planet that's all the same weather. Everywhere. All desert or something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but that's right. what you hate, right, Marty? What's that? I had a, that's I what had you hate, history. right? You hate those. I hate yeah. I had a history teacher one time that described history as what happens when lots and lots of people with different beliefs and different customs uh, and different desires pull in different directions all at the same time you mm. know our history is what you get as a result of that that's true you know, it happens with religions they're going to be competing interacting working with each other working against each other splintering coming back together uh, all the things that you would expect from people in in real life right and, and in that way you can really ask yourself when you're making this religion it how does this religion affect uh, factions of power? How does this origin motivate rich people or, or uh, people in governmental positions? Uh, how does it influence your character? And that can all add to that push-pull that you're describing there, Dave. Right, and I think one other thing that you can do with your religion is maybe you have a big 
overarching religion and this minority religion that's clinging on to its membership by traditions that are a little bit more ornate and a little bit more uh, bombastic, but or it's orthodox. Existing. You know, you can have extremely orthodox, orthodox fas- you know, factions of a, any religion, e- right. even one made up from whole cloth. Uh, mm-hmm. That actually would be a good idea because then that could create tension even within the faith that you've created. Um, so, you know, they, w- they want to hold power to a smaller circle, only mm-hmm. allow so many people access to the relic. Right. Uh, you know, whatever it happens to be, it can be and a good plot, still... plot tool. Yeah, right. relics, and not... re- and... relics are a big part of religions. It could be Absolutely. really cool in your story. The, 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 the mystical sword, you know, the, the relics, chalice. But... <laughs> right. But the power would be over here. But they have their little world, but the big world doesn't even think of them as more than dust. Well, I think a corollary here is that your religion has to have some impact on the world, or why have mm-hmm. it in your story? It's not, you well, know, it's not meant to be just a decoration. Right. Or don't don't right. world build for the sake of world building. That's right. as bad as info dump. That is bad. Yeah. Historically, religions had an impact on life, survival, politics, what you couldn't couldn't eat, how you dealt with the plague, mm-hmm. or whether you raised an army to go take back the Holy Land. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and if you if you do it right, um, you could have religion actually have origins as a teaching tool. Yeah. Oh, do these things because when the suns align, we're going to have you know these insects crawl up out of the ground and try to eat our faces. So right. that's the time when we're all pious and we're indoors uh, praying while the sky goes dark. You know, whatever whatever it is, you can uh, um, use it as a teaching tool. I, I grew up around Amish people. There were lots of lots of Amish people um, with farms around Dover, Delaware, where I, where I grew up, uh, and there are different sects of them as well. Um, so, for instance, there's Amish that don't believe in technology, and there's Amish Mennonites who believe in minimal technology, like refrigerators, but not TVs and stuff. So I can see the same in the, in the fantasy world where you have a religion that doesn't believe in magic users and right. another split off from them that believes in magic, but only like healing magic. Right. Something yeah, like or, you know, the guy that just goes to church on Christmas. You know, you're going to have characters like that. And, you know, if they have an awakening or something, you know, suddenly that's the guy who is uh, um, got to go save the... Um, the golden child and you know, right. the chosen or, one yeah, yeah. called so, in through the so david to, to that point i have a question sure what should our listeners be aware of or be thinking about when they're creating religions and they also have a magic system how does it like clash and how does it complement a magic system or science uh, i think that a lot of times religion um provides a coherent explanation for why the world works as it does. It may or may not be true, but it explains the world in simple terms for somebody and even explains, you know, what happens after you die, um, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, it, it could explain the origin of magic. It could explain where uh, the most powerful artifact came from that uh, allowed the, this uh, religious uh, ethnicity to be freed from uh, slavery by some other uh, empire or something like that. Uh, again, there's parallels there that you can draw on, on history from, but, but usually it, it provides some system of belief in supernatural things, which fits into a fantasy world very nicely, and um, some explanation for how the world works. Mm. Um, and you've, you, you can probably find uh, some of the f- most fun examples I, I can think of are uh, some of the Indian legends about mm-hmm. how the world came to be and, and uh, uh, how Coyote was a trickster and, and did things and, and messed up different plans of the other gods and stuff. Right? That, that's actually a good thing to add too, to our listeners that when you're creating a religion, you should probably think about having some sort of creation story. Yeah, it explains origin it. story, yeah. Um, uh, something else to potentially think about is monotheistic versus poly- polytheistic. One oh, yeah. god to rule them all or, or many, many gods. Yeah. 
Or, or worship. ancestor worship is also one you could consider. Yeah, or animalism. Basically putting uh, deities into animals. And something I've seen in fantasy terms, and you saw this a little bit with some of the uh, uh, Greek and Roman religions, it was kind of the concept of uh, demigods, that, mm. that people could become gods or, or people could be related to gods or, or have certain non-mortal powers and, and such. Um, and that is something that you could factor into a religion as, as well. Not gods, can be, gods can be really fun characters. Right, and maybe yeah. that explains magic. People who yeah. have magic. That's what I was going to say is that, yeah, magic could be its own from cult of religion. This particular god or that particular god. It can be really fun to have gods as characters and your character pisses, pisses one of them off. You right. know? <laughs> that can be really an interesting. That is something I usually like to be careful about because, yeah. Um, that's literally Deus Ex Machina. <laughs> well, sometimes, sometimes it's how is that Deus, how is that Ex like, Machina? Terry Pratchett had a lot of religions in his books, and it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, of course, the Nancy, the Nancy boys and uh, the American gods. Yeah, uh, that was American not gods is Neil Gaiman. Which is also cool. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Lots yeah, you're right. That. I, I thought you said uh, Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett. I thought, yeah, I thought I'm you talking said about like Nightwatch. Yeah. Those. Books. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, but anyway, and, and did death those too. Who always speaks in caps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <clears throat> I gotta listen more. So American God, there's there's a great um, example. Yeah. I, and the great cool thing about the world building in that is that it. It backed away from the individual religions and showed another greater forest for the trees in that story. And that right. was awesome. Right. Well, that was sort of a meta system for religions. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. So here's another one. Okay. So you have a belief system. How do people ritually worship um, and support that belief system? I mean, going to church on Sundays is one obvious example, but in the fantasy world, there might be other examples. Yeah, that's a really cool point that you brought, bring up because it reminds me of how some stories that have fictional religions and fictional gods have near proof of those gods. I mean, not even near, literal proof because they will be a character, like I said, or they will st literally strike lightning down from their cloud and you can see them. Um, yeah. th their effects are so material that there's really no question about is this real? Is it not real? And so that really changes the dynamics. And sometimes you have stories um, that purposefully keep it very agnostic or very unanswered uh, to increase the mystery, increase the maybe even the, the relatability to our own origins in our world. So, I mean, I kind of like both of them. Um, I might, I mean, you can have a lot of, like I said, you can have a lot of fun with religions in fictional worlds where it's clear that it is, this absolutely is a reality. But it's also very, uh, uh, I don't know, it's very intriguing and, and moving almost to me in a way to have religions mean so much to people in your world, but there's really no answer that that's true or that's really there. That's kind of you could have, poignant and powerful too. Yeah, you could have a religion that is home-based, that you have a little shrine to your God and similar mm -hmm. to what the Romans Yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of uh, nuts and bolts you can do. In That's it. very common in Slavic origins, yeah. Eastern European. Leaving, leaving milk out for the fairies so they don't mess with your crops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, you know, the, uh, there's a lot of uh, religions that do um, um, things like that, ritual tithing to support mm -hmm. the temples. Mm -hmm. Lots of uh, uh, fantasy stories do do that, um, mm -hmm. and then you know, uh, as decades or millennia go by, you know, maybe even the priesthood, you know, doesn't doesn't even believe it anymore, but they want the cash. Yeah. You know? uh, so there's a lot of options uh, associated with that. That. Um, in fact, there's some really good stories out there about um, uh, uh, people that um, were in a faith and they've lost their they've lost their beliefs, and then something happens that can be cool. and it's profoundly right. returned. Right. Um, I'm thinking the movie Signs. Do you guys see that movie? Yeah, yeah science fiction know. movie um, about an alien invasion, crop right. circles. It was great, but. Mm -hmm. uh, it had a it had a 
a bigger story though is the interesting thing that was about religion and about mm. belief it was is it wasn't so much about the alien invasion that is was about that and it was very very well done and very heartfelt and actually another interesting way of doing it is a theocracy imagine your world is a theocratic society in the religion that you've just created and yet the leaders of that theocracy may indeed be losing their faith and what happens to that society do they regain their faith or does the society crumble well what do you guys think about the the cliche of the evil religious leader i've read a lot of stories where you know the cult leader is the is the evil one or the you know the, the priest is very corrupt or what do you guys think about that cliche uh it, it, it is uh you know it's a you know classic trope yeah or uh it's a trope you know the villains you know he's actually evil because he secretly worships you know demons or whatever the hell um i think you can do what your story needs yeah you, yeah it's but okay don't, don't. to have it, it's okay to have your villain be that guy just write it better yeah. i mean I've, <laughs> right. I've done the trope myself but I just, you know, I'm interested in what you guys think. Like anything, if it's executed well, who cares if it's a trope, right? Right. The only right. caveat is don't make the evil person faithful to one of our modern human religions that is very popular because you're going to get in a lot of trouble if you do that. Well, I mean, I don't know if I would even go that far. I mean, your character, if, if you want to write that and you execute it well and believably, sure. I mean, what, what haters going to hate? Just write a good story. Yeah, yeah uh, that's it. And, uh, a good story. It's write a good story first. And part of that is really good world building. And yep. I've read a lot of stories that have really weak religion world building. Mm. They'll, they'll forget about that. They'll spend a ton of time world building everything else, you know, mm. describing the architecture, just, you know, doing all the other stuff. Um, the level of technology and how, how they you know, build wagons for their horses and, right. you know, because their horses have six legs or whatever. And um, then they get really weak with the... Uh, and certainly in science fiction. Ben well, Brown certainly took the Catholic Church to town in his books. Well, yeah. Well, but I mean, also think about how um, a religion can be inserted in different uh, areas of your story. When somebody yeah. dies, when a baby is born, mm -hmm. um, caring for the sick, the terminally ill, uh, regular worship on whatever and, schedules that they, they do. I think uh, also a uh, fascinating concept is similar to Canticle for Wheat Leibowitz or the Doctor Who episode, uh, Face of the, uh, the, the Face of Evil, where you have a, a technological society that has broken down and has these rituals based on science or technology that have now become dogma on our now religious procedures that they don't know anything about what the technology was before. They just understand that this is what they must do. It becomes dogma, it becomes religion, it becomes things that uh, you must believe in and, and worship. You must check the sensor net every morning, uh, even though the sensor net no longer works and there are exactly. no more nuclear missiles coming in. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, a moral code. Uh, religion often has some sort of moral code with it, uh, often encapsulated into scripture. You know, basically, how do you live your life? So right. what are some of the things that a fantasy religion might tell you about how you should live your life? Well, I will say this, that um, there was a quote, and, and I'm going to go into religion for a moment, but there's a quote by Hillel, a famous uh, philosopher of uh, Jewish uh, thing, uh, faith, and he took the Bible and he said, or the Torah in that case, and he took the Bible and said, the, the, the whole message is love, love one another. The rest is just boilerplate. And in a sense, that's, that's the belief system uh, that, that maybe you want to have, something like that, love one another. Well, if, if you began and end with that in a science fiction story. It's not going to be very yeah, interesting. Not all that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. But uh, groupism falls into that. And groupism says, well, love every, love one another as long as you're a part of the group. And then you twist it in that way. And until then if you, you're not part of the group. Until you meet a religion that says conquer the world and spread our faith. <laughs> yeah. And then there's that. Yep. And I just reread Dune. 
Yeah. Dude, there you are. We're going to see the movie. Uh, I also think there's opportunity. Um, so you can do a lot of things in, in a fantasy world that perhaps were done or not done in the real world. Um, so for instance, you could have a, a fantasy uh, that empower, uh, where a religion empowers women, uh, yeah. perhaps more than was done historically in the real world, um, things of that nature. I can read a very good book with that. Can you imagine, for instance, an order of warrior women knights? Oh yeah, for for the church. Yeah. Um, so I want to talk about like sneaky ninjas. <laughs> <laughs> Lady ninjas. Pet peeve that That'd I have. Awesome. <laughs> All right, let's hear your pet peeve. With Harry Potter, who I I have decided. Okay. I know we were we are very positive about all authors. But I've decided that J.K. Rowling doesn't really care about my opinion, so it's going to be okay. So, um, in Harry Potter, one of the main themes is like you know confronting the fear of death, confronting mm -hmm. you know sacrifice, and maybe losing your life for someone that you love, which is an awesome theme. You know, I like that mm -hmm. theme. Mm -hmm. But that theme is totally watered down because of the fact that J.K. Rowling has ghosts roaming the castle, which proves that there's an afterlife, and there's nothing really to worry about because they're having a jolly time. So to me, that's like a major problem, but also a great warning sign for if you're doing a religion, think about like if you have ghosts in your religion and you have a communi clear communication with the afterlife, how would that really affect your character's idea of death? And does that, you know, like, does it still make sense? It's so logical that there's like a very big fear of death, and that death is a huge part of, of the world. That's just something that you can take wrong with it. I don't know. I think right. Well, Sirius never did come back from the veil. So at least there was that. There was no ghost Sirius. Well, I think it depends. I mean, again, if ghosts is something you want in your world, yeah, uh, you have to incorporate that into your world building. And if right. it exists, um, demonstrably in your fantasy world, then that is something that your religion will probably explain. Oh, they're right. cast into limbo for their sins. They've left stuff undone in the world. Right. Well, I mean, if you go into Pullman's uh, books, the, uh, the um, gosh, I'm trying to think, his master's, master's, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, I'm too old. But anyway, you know, where he has the subtle knife and the golden compass and all that, that series. Um, I mean, yeah. he goes into a very... Sorry? Yeah. Uh, but Pullman's books. Yeah. And so, uh, so I mean, yeah. he has a very oh, interesting... Oh, Pullman's thing. books are notoriously atheistic, aren't they, Jeffrey? They are. They are. But they're building on concepts that uh, people believe. And they're showing a religion that's not our religion. That's their religion. And just showing, showing that maybe it's not quite all that should be. And that, that's a different way of telling a story. Yeah, he was pretty daring. I'm not sure I'd be he quite- He was daring. My yes, he was daring, especially with the subtle knife. Subtle knife, he was going okay until he got to the subtle knife. And then he was like, really, you're going there? Okay. Uh, which is to say, you can do a lot with religion in, in a fantasy story, um, but it helps if you built it on, on a solid foundation. Um, right. And, you know that you, you're really using it for uh, something that's you know a major a major plank of your story. Yeah, but uh, relig uh, but uh, magic and through religion that magic it's itself ritualistic and that you have to do this and that and this and that to make the spell go through, and that you have these um, you know complex incantations and that can be its own religion too. The religion itself or the magic itself could be a religious experience. And that would be fascinating if your magic just system was a religious system. Have you read the Dare and I series by Catherine Kurtz? I have. Yeah, that's all. That's all magic, um, completely braided and intertwined, mm. intertwined with religion. Mm. It uh, totally was. It was the entire premise of the, uh, of the books. It was great. And we we mentioned Dune, Bene Jesuits. Well, it's not just the Benny Jesuits. No, I know, but the Benny right. Jesuits are the most, you know, the Fremen and all them. They're they're they've got their own thing. Spice. Yeah, they got their own religion. Picture. Oh, I know. That yeah. surrounds water. Yeah. And, uh, which is kind of creepy. 
Yeah. <laughs> Especially how they conserve water. Yeah. yeah so um, I'm, I'm running out yeah, of that. Yeah, that's well done, though. Yeah, absolutely. I'm absolutely. running out of sophisticated things to add, but I did have one other thought that I thought I'd throw out there. We've been talking a lot about fantasy and building your own religion, but it might also be worth considering this is usually, uh, this is always going to be in science fiction where it's set in, you know, Earth or in our universe, but in, you know, a thousand years from now, whatever. And not building your own religions, but examining how our current religions might have evolved. Yeah, you know, is, is, is Catholicism still here? And if so, how has it changed? Is uh, Judaism still here? If so, how has it changed? Right. That's also well, awesome. Babylon, conversation. Babylon 5 had this whole thing where there are people that believe in the great beyond in terms of when first contact was made with an alien species, it said, bugger all the other religions. We're now going to believe this new religion that's a religion for all the species in the universe rather than just our one planet. And he had this whole thing where people believed that instead of, I believe Dr. Franklin was one of the believers of- And you have to think, how, does, how did these religions survive the, the technological discoveries? Did, were they challenging to the religion? Were they affirming to the religion? Um, you know, explain why it's still here. Or why, are, why there are new branches that have right? yep. taken off and supplanted the, the previous ones because they, they incorporated new beliefs into the belief system. Sure. Right. Right. Okay. Um, we haven't talked much about the organization of a religion. Um, I think this, I, I feel like this is more of a mechanical topic, but uh, every religion as an organization, um, I mean, it's got some things that it needs to do in, in order to survive as an organization. So I'm going mm -hmm. to throw the question out to you guys. What are some of the things that a religion needs to do? Um, even outside the ideology, just to survive operationally for, you know, a thousand, two thousand years. Well, I might have um, the base tenant that uh, you teach your, they integrate children early. Yeah. And, um, and you know, Head procreation, you know, uh, encourage procreation with your guys, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, stuff like that. I'd, I'd, I'd start there. Um You'd probably have um, a hierarchical. Then, uh, you could also, like, some religions uh, could be um, evangelical. Is that the right word? Out there trying to recruit dudes mm -hmm. as opposed to building them from the inside, as mm -hmm. opposed to other religions that might you just discover the religion and they don't, right. you know. Um, and other oh, religions go out, go out and conquer new lands for their, their, their. Uh, That's religion. right. Or maybe the religion is the exact opposite of evangelical and is very exclusive about who they allow into their religion. Yeah, they don't allow many people into the religion. Uh, That's usually a recipe right. for disaster. I, I do know of it one religious organization uh, that bred itself out of existence. <laughs> um, uh, it was not so mm -hmm. much a religion, but a religious. Um, uh, basically institution that was run for the benefit of the, the people that belonged to it. Um, and they were very selective about new members and such. And basically they aged themselves out. And then um, since they, were, they weren't growing, uh, they, they eventually withered as an organization and ended. So I, it is possible for religion to, <laughs> to disappear. <laughs> yeah, maybe you could have world building where, you know, there was a great war to annihilate a specific religion. And then they find yeah. those dudes artifacts. And right. then they think, hey, maybe these guys were onto something. I, so I had a religion. A was on. I had a religion in a somewhat comical um, story that believed that the world would actually be the Garden of Eden except for people. Uh, and so they were uh, they were promoting um, no breeding and you know, just turn your kingdom over to the religion. And they'll be sure that the, the nation eventually ends and has no more people. Huh. Um. <laughs> yeah, not so much. Not, so much. not real plausible, but again, it was, it was a somewhat comical, uh, satirical story. Um, but I mean, I as, far as, as far as the religious organization, I mean, hierarchy is natural to consider. But yeah, I think when you have a, uh, a, the top person, we're not going to give them a name, but the top person. And then maybe some a cabinet around that top person. And that's where it gets interesting. 
is that you might have, as you just talked about, Marty, the, the minister of making sure that kids get educated and the minister of making sure that babies are born and the minister of enforcement, which is very interesting in terms of- Oh, you, oh, could, no. build, you could build your world religion your, or do your world building. You could have all kinds of structures, just like you know, companies have all kinds of structures. You yep. could have a very complex um, you know, uh, tree of you know power you know that could be mm -hmm. classic um um you could have it be very flat you only have the the one sacred dude who uh you know the uh, dude yeah the the you know they says the you. stuff yeah <laughs> Artie, would you like to start a new religious franchise for our religion or the dude <laughs> i'm of the dude you're of the dude. The dude abides. Um, well, you you say that it's funny. I am actually an I know you are. ordained mer minister in the Church of the Latter Day Dude. I know you are <laughs> because I love the Big Lebowski. Exactly. And all the serious I'm glad you Big Lebowski that. fans yeah. are, you know, dude is priests. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, I think every religion has some basic organizational stuff. Um, if they're going to survive as an organized religion, I, I think they have to figure out how to re recruit people. They mm -hmm. have to recruit people to run the organization. Um, they have to bring in money. I, I don't know. Yeah, how bring you... in money. They got to have a plan to oh, yeah. sustain. Um, if, you know, I, I fully would see the world building for religions to have the actual pious, you know, um, dudes and then the business you know the biggest business guys who are taking care of you know making sure that we got porridge and shit right right so, yeah so the there's uh, you know the chatelaines of mm -hmm. uh of uh, uh the church but then you got quasimodo ringing the bell yeah and maybe well, he's you know and, and then uh, the uh, chosen uh, one some churches are fairly loose or some religions are fairly loose. Some are more tightly organized, um, like for instance, the Catholic church. Um, so depending on, on how loose or tight the religion is, you've probably got some kind of mechanism for resolving religious disputes. How many angels can dance on the head of a pen? Mm -hmm. Or, or what, what something means or how something should be treated? Um, I, know that, I know the Catholic church has done that type of stuff. I don't know about some of the other religions. Well, no, that's the mission of Judaism, interpretations of the Bible or the Torah. Again, some of the things we've just discussed are kind of practical. How, how would any organization survive for a lengthy period of time? Uh, but it is something to take into account for the world building. Yeah. All right. Um, Great. Last thoughts? Anything we've missed? Rituals, artifacts, belief systems? Ethical well, I will, I will say this. Um, we don't want to really do the episode on this right now, but uh, other religions, something like a political system, like communism or national socialism, in that sense, it's dogmatic, it's hierarchical, it's a religious belief. But we're not going to talk, talk about that today, but it's something to think about for future. Well, I can really see, I've been reading about um, different kinds of uh, uh, subgenres of uh, science fiction and... Um, uh, I've been reading about green punk. Have you, have you heard of this? Mm -hmm. It is, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, climate punk. And mm -hmm. I w was reading, a, you know, a blog post about religion that's been developed about um, all around the environment and the rise of religions associated with protecting the environment. It's pretty interesting. And that's cool. um, yeah, green book's cool. And there's a lot of world building you can go in that direction, especially, mm -hmm. you know, if it's post cataclysmic thing or whatever it is, then I believe your so. world, world building is uh, mm -hmm. um, building upon. One of your stories, David, is very green punkish. Yeah, well, I, I, I have written some climate punk, but uh, I, I can also see some interesting conflict there. So, in the real world, for instance, um, modern developers met, you know, primitive tribes in the Amazon and the primitive tribes got their asses kicked. But or they worship airplanes. Or 
Or maybe in the fantasy world, they have magic and their asses aren't so easily kicked. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And they're not to preserve the Amazon the way they want it, mm -hmm. or the, the fantasy equivalent, uh, puts them on equal terms with the fantasy equivalent of the Roman uh, army, and now let the battle begin. Right, or the conquistadors come, they're slaughtered, and then they go back to Spain. In, in other words, the Incas go back to Spain. Yeah. I think this some of those dragon um, uh, serpent uh, uh, gods that the uh, Incas mm -hmm. or Aztecs had were real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They they kick conquistador butt, right? Dragon serpent gods, yeah. I mean, a lot of a lot of cool fantasy origins are also based off of mythical creatures like griffins and you know, dragons and stuff like that. But I mean, right. my my last thought. Um, I think this was a really cool episode. I enjoyed doing it. Um, I guess my my closing thought is that in my experience uh, in in writing religions and frankly in experiencing religions uh, in my personal life. I have found that um, religion is often less about the divine and more about the people. Uh, so make sure that you're focusing on how religion and all its traditions uh, affect and impact your people. Well said. Yeah, and I'll just, my last thought is just as you don't have a mono planet, don't have a mono religion either. Um, Unless you have a really cool explanation for it. Mm. I don't know. Like the Zahn and yeah, the even then, Fantasy stories are better if they provide uh, rich avenues for conflict, I think. Mm. And Those... a lot of religions are developed because of the environment, because the planet's different in the desert than it is in the ocean, than it is in the yeah. mountain. Yeah. So think about that. Yeah, but uh, guys, look up. Uh, watch Babylon 5, the Zahn and the Centauri, trust me. All right. With that, I think we have now uh, concluded our topic on re on religious world building. Okay. Another fine structured episode. And we will see you next time.